Hello, my crafty friends. I started a little bit early because it always seems to work if I do that. And if I wait till it's right seven o'clock, then something goes wrong. <laughs> so it helps to start, go ahead and start early and um, beat whatever gremlin is trying to keep me from streaming. Hi, Miss Sally Kay. It's good to see you. I'm glad you're here. Oh, that looks even better on the camera than it does in, in real life. <laughs> Most things don't always look better to me, but this does. This is a, when I was going through my water soluble um, stuff to decide what to keep and what to get rid of. This was the page I tested stuff on. Hi, Teresa. It's good to see you. I don't know if I've seen you in here before, but I'm happy you're here. Um, anyway, I, I just put it on this. I decided I'm going to start keeping track of which prop game we play and what the prompts are and who played. And so I just stuck it on this to make it pretty. Hi, Alina. You usually lurk. Well, I'm proud of you for, for jumping in here today. I don't mind lurkers, you know, but um, but it's nice to get to see you then know who was here too. I've decided that um, I'm going to give you a quick list while since you're here early, you can listen to this of the things that I'm going to go through. Um, hi, Lori. Um, like I went through. I hope I said hi, Alina. I meant to. Did I say hi? <laughs> uh, I have a pretty bad headache tonight, and so I may be um, not on my game. <laughs> but I'm I'm glad you're all here. Um, I'm going to go through just some of the things that I've listed to go through and clear clear out or um, decide what to keep and what to get rid of. Hi, Becky. In um, in my craft room because I have to make some space. And so I don't know that I'll go in this order, but um, right now, these are the things I'm planning to go through and look at. Stickers, stamps, lace, fabric, envelopes and folders, paint, music papers, book pages, scrapbook paper, miscellaneous bling kind of stuff, ephemera, books, yarn, and spinning fiber. So um, if you have a special interest in any of those things, um, you just stay tuned. <laughs> I decided I need to talk about something um, and I won't start showing my um, my yarn until seven o'clock because there are a lot of people who won't be expected. They won't be expected to be come in until seven. But um, another thing. And I haven't made the video yet, but I'm going to pretty soon to show um, what I'm putting in my thousand subscriber giveaway challenge. And um, I've decided to um, to let you enter it three different ways. Well, actually, two of them kind of go together. But um, one thing is you have to be 18 or older. And I think pretty much everybody who watches me is well over 18. But... <laughs> Um, and you have to be an open subscriber. That means if you have your subscriptions hidden, then I can't check to make sure you're a subscriber. Um, those of you who are in here today, you know, I know most of you and I know most of you are subscribers or you wouldn't be up there right now. But anyway, um, there, you know, somebody might enter a comment on a video and me not know if they're a subscriber or not. And I want to give everybody the chance who does that. Um, I saw Becky talking about um, doing her giveaway, uh, her next giveaway, just based on comments on her uh, videos. She's just going to randomly choose a video. And I thought that is a magnificent idea. And so rather than having people comment on my subscriber giveaway video, I'm just going to have my children choose a day in the month of June and whatever day that is, whatever video I did on that day, that's going to be uh, everybody who commented on that particular video will be entered in the giveaway. If you're a subscriber and you're over 18, um, the second way to enter would be to send um, 
some little piece of your art, an ATC, an um, artist trading coin, a postcard, a tag, a painting paper, a card, um, anything. Any, it doesn't have to be anything major, but, um, and I don't want, you know, I'm not going to give 10 points if you send 10 things because some people can, don't want to send but one thing. And I think their effort to send one thing um, should be rewarded as much as somebody who has more time and can send a bunch. So, um, so I'm just going to have each person's entry. If you enter the giveaway by sending me some little piece of your art, whatever it is, you get one entry that way. Uh, if you send me 10 things, you still get one entry. So that way there won't be any motivation to send extra. Hi, Holly. I'm glad you're here. I'll tell, I'll say all this on the video that I'm going to do. I was hoping to get that done today. And then today's been a bad day, so I didn't get it done. But uh, I'm just kind of giving you all a heads up. The third way to enter is to do a video response of you making whatever piece of art it is you're going to send. And so there you have, you can have a total of three entries. If you happen to um, comment on the particular video that gets chosen um, and you send some little piece of your art and you do a video response, but nobody can get more than three entries. So that's uh, the way I've decided to do it. And I will upload a, a, um, a video showing what's going to be in the giveaway. And I haven't decided yet, but I may choose two. I may choose two people. Um, we'll see. I'm also going to also add in as one of the things, um, just in case an international subscriber um, happens to win, I will give them that um, the it's the same set of um, print offs that I put out in my 500 subscriber giveaway. And I'll just give them a link to that if, if not in the States, because it costs so much to ship stuff. Um, and I will, if I can find those papers again, I'll show you. But if not, if you want to know what that is, if you're an international subscriber and you want to know what that is, go to my 500 subscriber giveaway and I show the pages that are all included in that. Hi, Linda. I'm glad you're here. Anyway, I wanted to talk about what kind of videos I'm doing in the future on the cleaning out of my studio and the subscriber giveaway. I wanted to talk about those things before we get started. So. Thank you, Holly. Um, I, I really liked them and I hoped that other people would too. But, um, oh, I got a, go away. I got a notification. <laughs> um, I'll have to deal with that later. I'm not going to mess with it right now. Whew. Okay. Um, I was going to show y'all the um some of the art yarns that i've made spinning and um most all of my yarns that i've spun were spun on a spinning wheel they were not spun on a hand spindle i have a lot of different yarns that are still on spindles because i have like 25 spindles with stuff on them hi susan um susan i just got your um your message and i will um I'll, I'll write you back after we get through here about that. Um, so you can, uh, we can talk about that. I don't want to discuss it right here, but, um, but I did get your message. I just can't respond to it right this minute. Okay. So who's Lori giving a bad time to? <laughs> oh, Holly. Okay. Well, Holly, Holly's ornery too, so it'll be okay. Hi, Carly. I'm glad you're here. Hi, Jerry. It's good to see you. Um, so the first thing I'm going to do is show you the some of the yarns that I've spun, and I'm going to talk a little bit about them and uh, what makes them different from each other. This one, um, let me unwind it because it's kind of hard to see in, in this little scheme. This is, um, I think, the only one of these yarns that I have that I spun and plied on a spindle, and it's some of that gray with the silk mixed in. Can you see that? And so this is a, um, it's a pretty small yarn. 
it's really the smallest two ply that I've got out there. So hi, Beverly. It's good to see you. And I, I really like it. It's not as soft as some others because that gray wool is a Shetland wool and it's just not as soft as some other wools. But, um, but it was fun. And it was fun to actually get a skein of yarn, small though it is, out of something that I spun on a hand spindle. Whoops. So there's that one. <laughs> And this one, we talked about, uh, Beth was talking about sp spinning with mohair locks. And this, this skein of yarn right here is all mohair locks. And it's really pretty and I like it, but it is definitely not anything that I will ever um, knit or crochet or weave something that's going to go next to my skin out of because it's not soft. But I think it'll make really pretty um, stuff to go in, you know, in tags, the fibers to go in a tag. I think it'll be really cute that way. And um, so I probably will use it like that. Hi, Janet. I'm glad you're here. But um, but you can see that when you spin, and this is a singles. I, I haven't plied it. It's just a singles yarn spun out of mohair locks. So and that, it was fun to spin. I, I've never spun anything out of locks except for this. So. It was definitely an interesting experiment. Let's see what else I've got on here. That's all it says. Okay. I didn't even, I didn't do this for Spinzilla, so I didn't even measure the yardage on it. I just put a label. This one, um, this is 424 yards of a singles young, a singles yarn. It's wool. I'm not sure what kind of wool. I think blue face Lester, but I'm not sure. And I spun it and then I dyed it. So this is one of the few yarns that I spun plain and then dyed. Um, let's open it up so you can see it maybe a little bit better. And I dyed it. Um, I just, I wrapped it kind of like this. I think in the dye bath and I put some dye, different dyes in different places and just let it sit there and soak it in. Um, but it's a, it's a pretty fine singles yarn and you can weave. One reason I left some of these singles is because they give you a different texture. Um, they give you a different texture than, um, than applied wool will. And in, when you're um, weaving, it doesn't matter to have singles or um, it's fine to use singles. I guess is what I'm saying. You could crochet or knit with this too if you wanted to. It has been set, so it, it would work. It's just um, it it would it won't hold you if you want a pretty shape. You know, you want to knit a scarf and you want it to be perfectly flat and, and slick and all of that. This is not what you would want to use because it's a singles and it will, it'll kind of go in here. Um, anyway. Hi, Nancy. I'm so glad to see you. I'm glad you're here. We're talking about different yarns that I've spun in the past. Uh, people who were watching the live stream hangout we did on hand spinning wanted to see some so I'm bringing some of them out to show you this is another singles and I spun this on a spindle um but there was so little of it of this fiber that I didn't want to ply it because then it would be even shorter so I just left it a singles also hi Teresa I'm so glad you got your kit if you have trouble and those videos aren't enough, we can do a private hangout and I'll help you. Or we could do another hangout uh, publicly and I could help you. I don't care. But anyway, this is um, another one. So this one and this one were spun on spindles, hand spindles. These were spun on, on the... Um, Hi, Mary. These were spun on the wheel. Okay, my brain is. And here's another singles. I, I really didn't realize I had done so many singles yarns, but um, but this is another singles that I uh, spun. 
And this, I did this one by taking several different um, fibers and just spinning a little bit of that one. And, and then I went on and spun some of this one. And then I went on and spun some of that one. And then I spun some of that one. So it's kind of a gradiated um, yarn, but it, it wasn't done in the dyeing process. It was, it was done in the spinning process. Hi, Mitz. I'm glad you're here. Just one of those experiments. But I think it's fun. And let's see. This one is a, um, it's just a fun yarn. I did, it's two different size yarns. I did one, um, one of them kind of big and one of them smaller. And then I plied them together. So you have um, some of it that looks like this and then some of it that looks, you know, like a regular yarn. I don't know if you can see. Anyway, it's just, it was another little experiment. And, um, and I love it too. It's not, there's not enough of it. A lot of these, there's not enough of it to make an actual, uh, thank you, Ruth. Not enough of them to make a project. So. Um, that's why, one reason I'm going to make a Ruana and I'm going to blend them all into the project together. So, yeah, Mary, go ahead and move into the studio. Okay, this one um, is a very soft, creamy, silky um, blend of wool and silk. And um, it's a very, it was very hard to spin because the silk slid and the wool didn't. Um, so it's it's a very uneven spinning job. You can see that. Even plied, it doesn't look very even. Let me take it out of the so you can see it a little bit better. Um, it's not real even, but I, I love it anyway. See, this place is hardly spun at all right there. When you applied it, it almost came unspun right there because it was bigger than these but I, I think it's pretty too so you can ply what you've done in the hangout with um with itself or with something else it doesn't matter whatever you want to do i'm fixing to show you a, a something else um just a second another way you can do it if you want to make your make it last into something bigger and that is to ply it with um, sewing thread. And that's the way this is done, which gives it a really unique texture. Um, kind of a, boucle, a little bit of a boucle look. Isn't that pretty? That's some uh, wool that I dyed and spun. And then I plied it with a dark blue um, thread. And that was a blast. Well, it depends on when you want it to say it's done, Susan. Um, this one is a singles. I didn't apply it with anything, but it's done as far as I'm concerned. This one is applied and it's done. This one is a singles, but it's done. It depends on when you decide it's done. This one is applied with a string and it's done. It's finished. Now, they're, when, when they're really finished is when you after you spin them and you wash them and let them dry. And that keeps the, the twist in the yarn is that washing. That's the finishing stage. But um, if you like what you've got when it's a single, you don't have to ply it with anything. Um, it would not be real easy to knit with unless you felted it a little bit maybe to so that it wouldn't, the needles wouldn't get in there and poke in it. Um, but it's done when you decide it's done. <laughs> How's that for a non-answer? <laughs> anyway, this, this, like I said, was plied with sewing thread. And it's, I love it. It's one of my favorites. It, it's kind of like an Arnold page or anything else. It's, um, it's done when you say. This one says, hand dyed, hand spun yarn, spiral ply, 
wool with cotton thread. So I don't, I didn't keep track of what kind of wool it was. This one is one that I, um, I dyed and, um, I dyed and then I, I spun it and plied it. And this was dyed with Kool-Aid and it's alpaca. It looks a little more vibrant in the camera than it really is. It's, um, it's a little bit more muted in real life. Hi, Patricia. It's good to see you. But I like it. It's pretty. This one will definitely go in the Ruana. I'll show you next the one that I plan to use as my um, warp threads for the Ruana. But I have more of it than I do any, any of the other ones. Let's see. Let me check. Because I have two of them that are similar. And I'm not sure which one had the most yarn. Yeah. Okay. I've got two skeins of this one. And it's blues and greens with a little bit, maybe a little bit of purple. Um, and it's also one that I dyed. And then um, this is a Corydale hand-painted. Um, second what is second oh the second scheme okay i was going what is that um there's 243 yards of two ply yarn here and then um this one that goes with it there's 303 yards of it so a uh, ruana r-u-a-n-a -A is a it's kind of like a um a blanket turned into a poncho kind of when you look at it it almost looks like a blanket turned into a poncho or a jacket but it's um let me draw one for you just a second put this up um let me get some paper and i'll draw one for you because you're not the only person who's asked that question so Okay, if you take a long rectangle, actually what you do is end up with two, taking two long rectangles, um, but they're supposed to be even, <laughs> and you sew them together in the back, and you would have fringe or something if you want to here. And right here, you have the space for your neck. So it goes over. So in the front, it ends up looking, well, like this. I don't know if you can see that. <coughs> Goodness, I'm sorry. Excuse me. And you can put um, some little slits in it and have a belt go through so it can fit tight, tighter around your waist. You can seam this up on this side and this side, except for a place to put your arms through. Or you can leave it like a blanket. I've even seen people take throw blankets and cut a seam you know, cut them in the half, halfway up and make a Ruana out of that. So you can do it without weaving it yourself. You can just take a, a throw blanket and cut it right up the middle halfway so that you've got a neck place. You might even make this a little bigger. So you've got a place for your neck and then you wear, it's like it where you wear it kind of like a jacket. <clears throat> How long does it take to do one of those? Oh my goodness. Um, are you talking about a Ruana or are you talking about spinning a skein of yarn? Um, because there, there is a big difference. <laughs> the spinning is what takes the most time. 
if you're gonna if you're gonna make a ruana out of your hand spun yarn, spinning the yarn takes the most time. However long it takes you to spin it. And since I'm doing mine in bits and pieces, I really couldn't tell you how long it would take me to spin enough yarn to weave a ruana. Um, and after spinning it, the next thing that takes the longest amount of time is warping the loom. And then weaving it off pretty quick because you do a pretty simple weave for a ruana. Most people don't do a complicated weave. So I know that's a non-answer too, but um, it depends on how fast you spin and how much time you have to devote to it. I don't have a lot of time to devote to it, so I've done it, you know, in pieces. Um, so I know like these three would definitely go in there. And um, so they're... No, you you don't get paid much when you, if you sell the yarn. And a lot of people ask me if my yarn was for sale. And um, and that's one reason it's not. Because I, I've seen people on Etsy ask $65 or $70 for a skein of yarn like this. I wouldn't pay that for it. Um, I don't have that kind of money. Most of us don't have that kind of money. So um, I'm not going to ask somebody to pay me something like that for a skein of yarn. So that's one reason I don't sell my yarn. I'm not a production spinner. I know people. I have a girl in my um, weaving guild who she can spin uh, yarn. I mean, she can spin it fast and perfect. And she sells hers because she can do that. But we sure it's worth it, uh, Jerry. But most people can't really afford to buy it. Um, I guess if somebody said, I'll pay you $65 for that skein of yarn, I'd probably say, okay. But uh, but most people that I know, you know, don't have the money to spend on one skein of yarn like that. Um, here's another one that I did that's kind of along the same lines as these. And it's purples. And... Um, these will all definitely be used together, but they won't be enough. I, I want to put in some kind of exotic things with it. So, hi, Sherry. It's good to see you. This one is a, a bulkier yarn, and it's a blue, um, blue wool with silk, um, a blue wool and silk mix. And then I added in some of that same um, sorry, sorry, silk into it. So this has got a lot more silk in it. Um, wool, wool silk, a wool silk bat. And into that bat, I carded some soft silk, which is what this green and pink and stuff is. That's called soft silk. Um, let me get a, I've got some of it over here. I'll get it out and show you. Those of you that bought a spinning kit, got a little bit of this in your kit. But, um, yeah, they probably would, but they've probably got other people already they buy from. This is the soft silk and it is really soft. It's, it's like, um, it's like shredded, sorry stuff. So it's really soft. And when it goes in, it's not going to make a, a really slick yarn and you can even spin just from this. Um. Let me get let me get my spindle out and show you this one that doesn't have any um, a leader is probably not the place to start with this. But anyway, So you can just spin this stuff and make a silk yarn out of it. Um, let me spin it a little more and then I'll ply it back on itself and show you what it would look like. <laughs> trying to drop my spindle okay see it would be really pretty 
it probably, unless you're a way, way better spinner than I am, it would not be sm perfectly smooth. But, um, but it makes a really soft, pretty yarn. But I haven't spun any of it like that. I've always just mixed it in with wool because I like the pop of color it gives and the texture. Uh, plus, what I've got is a big bag of a bunch of different colors. So there wouldn't be enough of, you know, I mean, I could spin all of this and make yarn and just do little bits, you know, at a time. But um, anyway, that's that's that. And then this, this is some that I spun on the, on the spinning wheel of that, um, that really soft stuff that I put in the kits. The one that I told you was um, uh, Superwash. That's what this is. This is yarn I spun out of that. So it's really, it's really squishy. It's very bouncy, a very bouncy yarn. I really like it. But most of my spinning is just, uh, yes, it's real silk. Uh -huh. Yeah, from the worms. Um, anything that's real silk comes from the worms. This um, was, um, I guess it would have been thrown away in past days <laughs> in India from making of saris. But um, now they're, sh they're shredding it up and selling it this way so that um, it's one of the ways the women over there are making, making money to take care of their families is by selling that stuff. So, um, anyway, this is the, um, that super wash wool. It's fun to have some real silk, Susan. It's a lot of fun. <laughs> it's fun to be able to play with it. And probably, you know, um, our generation is probably the first one that it's actually um, cost effective to be able to buy silk and play with it because of, you know, the way the world is now. You have access to things that you didn't have access to before the Internet and all of that. This is another one that is, um, it's hand, I hand dyed it and then I spun it. It also has, um, let me get it out here so you can see it better. This is also a wool silk blend. But this is um, silk blended with, um, with a cream colored wool. So I, the wool, it's, the wool wasn't dyed. The silk was what was, what was dyed. Hi Beth. So this is what, um, when you, when you mix that together, then, um, you can get something really soft and pretty. They would be, they would be pretty in a big basket. Instead, I keep them in a tub um, away from varmints that could get in and mess them up. <laughs> so I don't get to enjoy them unless I take them out like this, um, which is another reason to make my rana. Here's another one that I did with the, um, the wool hand spun single. And then the um, I used a red thread for this one. Yes, this is, this is a uh, blue face Lessander wool and, um, and it's plied with a, with a red thread. My son named this one spiral Ray. <laughs> so I think it looks like lava or something. This one, let's see what this one says it's spun out of. Okay, this is a merino. I think this is also super wash.
And it's one that I, I dyed the wool and then spun it. So you just get even more fun because, you know, you get, um, you get the wool and then you dye it and then you spin it. And so it gives you twice as much fun when you dye your own. <laughs> And then you get to pet it and play with it, make piles. <laughs> okay, this um, this is one that I made. Um, let me open it up. This one's plied, and it's made from Corydale wool and Lincoln locks. So I, um, I carded the Corydale wool and the Lincoln locks in there together, but you can see that the Lincoln um, in some places is coming out um, and showing up better, you know, making bubbly places and um, like that, which I think is a lot of fun. So this was a fun one to play with too. It's more personal. Yes, it is, Beth. It is. Uh, just the process of doing it makes you it, um, it makes you appreciate all the work that people in the past had to go to, you know. We don't have to do this now. If we do it now, we do it for fun. We don't, you know, we don't have to. Um, here's another one that is, um, this one's 354 yards hand painted top I painted it in stripes bright fall colors wool blend seven almost eight ounces this is almost eight ounces right here and it's a two ply 354 yards of yarn here this one's probably enough you could actually do something with it by itself um but it's probably going to go in my Rwanda too, because I'm going to need a lot of yarn for that. How do you measure it out? It's not a stupid question, Jerry. Um, for one thing, you put it on something that is, um, this is a two yard skein, which means um, the whole circle is two yards. And so, you know, it's two yards. And so then you count one, two, three, four, five, six, and see how many, how many rounds you have of that two yards. And so when you, um, when you, do, when you do that, then you can, and it's a guesstimate. It's even then it's not exactly perfect, um, an, an exactly perfect amount, but, but the two yard scheme makes it easier to count. There are um, there are little machines that you can buy, and when you're um, when you're taking it off your wheel and putting it on, um, putting it on a on the um, whatever you're going to use to make a skein or to make a ball, however you're going to do it, um, that you can run it through this machine and it will keep track of the yardage. I don't have one of those, but they do exist and they're, I don't think they're terribly expensive. I just haven't felt the need, you know, I'd rather buy wool than buy one of those because the yard is not that important for me since I'm not selling it. I don't have to worry about how much yardage is there. I just make what I want and play with it. And this is some more of that. Um, this same here is I just dyed some of it one way and dyed some of it another way. So these are the, it's the same, exact same kind of wool. This is Merino. I don't think this is superwash, though. I think this is just regular Merino. It doesn't feel as soft as the superwash. So you just choose your colors. And I want to say this one is also done with um, either food color or Kool-Aid. I'm not positive. Here's another. Um, it's not exactly the same as this one, but it's pretty close. They were dyed at separate times, so they're not the same, but um, they would work well together. 
I called this one fall quilt. It's 230 yards. So there's about half as much here as there is in this one. It looks like more than half as much because it's puffier, but it doesn't weigh as much. And it's, um, see, this is 354 yards and it's 7.75 ounces. This is 230 yards and it's 3.75 ounces. So um, it's more than half as long, but only half as heavy, half as much uh, wool is in it. So yeah, it's a good dye. It sure is. You add a little, um, well, and it has some citric acid in it already, which helps, but I still added some vinegar. Let's see what else I've got in here. Uh, my pile's about to overcome me. Okay, this is some that I carded from my fleece. Those of you that got spinning kits, you got a little bit of that fleece. And this is, I carded it and then dyed it and then spun it from that same fleece that you got a little bit of. So um, you can see how some of it's green and some of it's maroon and some of it's blue. And sometimes it's, you know, barber pulled between them. And that's just from um, the way you choose to spin it. But I really like that one too. That one will go in my Ruana as well because it'll mix well with the other ones that I've got. Well, thank you, Patricia. I'm almost through here. Here's another singles. Um, this is one of the first skeins that I spun. Um, this one I did not dye myself. This one I, I bought already dyed. And um, it's a it's a silk and merino mix. Very soft. Um, and I just loved it like this. So I didn't, um, I wanted to have more yardage. So I didn't ply it. I just left it like this. Of course I want to wallow in it. <laughs> That's why when people say, what do you do with your yarn? I say right now, I just pet it because <laughs> I just, you know. This one, this is some of that crazy quilt yarn I was telling you all about. This is singles. I never did ply it with anything, but it's the first time I tried. Just, um, and it's way, way, way overspun. I mean, this was like the second or third skein of yarn I ever did. And this was messy, messy, terrible wool that I got um, off of Etsy. It was felted. It was, it was a real mess. And so I just pulled some of it and um, started spinning it. And you can see it's way overspun. <laughs> oh, it's just as ugly as it can be. <laughs> But um, but I kept it. I didn't throw it away because um, it's it's pretty in its own way. But it's not soft. It's like wire. Um, these parts that are really you know overspun. <laughs> very boho, yeah. <laughs> it's very boho. But I think it would be fun to use um, you know, in tag for tassels on tags and things too. So it'll have its purpose. It's not going to go in my Ruana, but it'll have a purpose, I'm sure. Okay, let me move these others back into the box before I show you these because this is a completely different project. Um, doesn't have anything to do with 
the spinning is not what's important of these next ones I'm going to show you. So let me go ahead and put these back. I forget how much I've really spun until I get it all out. <laughs> Okay, these were all dyed. Um, we did a natural dye day with our um, our guild. These three were wool I got at the thrift store, just um, white wool. And I just brought them to dye because I didn't have enough of my own at this time. It was so, um, hi, Mina. It was um, when I was first beginning to spin and I didn't really have, I had this much yarn. This is all I had to bring that I had spun myself. So I brought some of this to dye it. This one, um, LAC, good grief. That doesn't tell me what it was spun with. Um, some kind of, some natural dye. It's pretty, whatever, whatever LAC is. Sorry. This one was done with sycamore bark off of my sycamore tree out in front of my house. Um, I think it's a really pretty kind of brown, golden brown color. This one is um, dyed with matter. Um, that's not the whole name. I don't know why I didn't write the whole name down, but I thought that would be enough to help me remember, I guess. No, it's not lilac. Um, it's three words, and I thought I would remember it from that, but I don't. But this one's dyed with matter. It, um, it didn't get as dark as some of the other wolves did. I saw somebody, some other people pull them out, and they were um, much darker than this. But I thought it went pretty with those. So I thought I could do a some kind of project with those three together. Hi, Tanya. These four are my very, very first um, spinning off my spinning wheel. And they were all done just plain, plain wool, um, no color. And then I took them to this dye day. You can see the spinning is not that great. It's nothing, not even close to the spinning I did on those other ones. Uh, this was dyed with turmeric. It's still, it's still pretty. It's just not as pretty as, um, you know, not as pretty as spinning as some of those others. I did say hi, didn't I, Tanya? If I didn't, hi. <laughs> Sorry, my brain's dead. Um, this one, this one was prickly pear and it came out really, really ugly. A whole bunch of us gave a little bit of yarn to one of the ladies and she did it in prickly pear. And prickly pear usually comes out something like this or a little bit lighter and more purpley. And it came out brown because it sat in there too long. So, um, okay, good. Thanks, Tanya. So I went ahead and over dyed that brown prickly pear yarn in indigo. And I ended up with kind of a teal. You can see there's a big difference. This is indigo. This is dyed with indigo um, from a plain yarn, a plain spun yarn. Yeah, it looks nothing like prickly pear. This one. Uh, oh, actually, this one's just the raw wool. This was just brown wool. Um, I It's funny because I remember how proud I was of this skein when I spun it. It was the best spinning I had done up to that point. And um, it wasn't even a really soft wool. But, um, but I still, you know, it, it pays to keep your beginnings and go back and look at them. And then you can see how much you've grown. And that's, um, that works for spinning as well as anything else. So, uh, actually that indigo, that was dyed with real indigo. 
um, we did a natural dye day and one of, one of the ladies brought an indigo vat and it is a very um, sensitive dye. It's expensive and you have to, the temperature has to be just perfect and everything has to be mortared just perfect and everything. Yeah, the sheep was this color. It's pretty, isn't it? It's a pretty color. Okay, so it's, um, so is this the cochineal or is it, no, cochineal is a different one, I think. I know that you can dye red with cochineal. Maybe that's what LAC is. Maybe it's L something, A something cochineal. I don't know, but I know cochineal does a red, a red dye. This one's not as red, so it may be something different from cochineal. Um. Anyway, there's my um, my spending endeavors. Thank you, Beth, for looking that up for me. I appreciate it because I could not remember. It's been probably uh, three or four years since I did that. So, so there's my wool for my wool um, show and tell for today. Yeah, this was, um, I think this was a powdered indigo. It was a kit that she bought that had the Morton and the indigo and um, all the instructions and you had to do it just a certain way, but it was a lot of fun. It was a lot of fun and it was beautiful. And the different yarns that went in all came out looking different because they were different kinds of wool. And some of them even dyed cotton in it and that looked completely different from the wool. So it was, that was a lot of fun. That was a lot of fun. And we need to do another one of those days. The lady who hosted that doesn't live here anymore. And so we haven't done one in a long time. You posted a video about, um, about Indigo this morning. Well, I need to, where, where did you post it? Lack, lack extract a red dye extract from the scale insect lassifer laca which is found throughout india southeast asia nepal burma bhutan and south china wow y'all didn't know you were going to get a a lesson in natural dyes today did you that is really cool Okay, well, I'll have to go look at your page, Susan. Thanks. Hannah's been wanting to do some indigo dyeing, so if we do it, maybe I'll um, maybe I'll videotape the process. Um, neither one of us, I think, are in the mood right now. I'm not. I can't afford right now to buy indigo because it it really is expensive dye, and I don't think Hannah's in the mood to let go. She doesn't let go of her money easy, so <laughs> so it, she may not want to spend it either. But when we do it. I'll make a video for you on it, but it may be a while. Okay. Um, how many of you want to play a prompt game tonight? Okay. I decided I'm going to start keeping track of all this. Um, I haven't been, but I want to now. So I'm going to start keeping track. Okay. Let's see. Holly and Becky. Mary. Mina. And Ruth. Okay. Um, if you want, if you decide, if anybody else decides they want to play, just go ahead and let me know so I can write your name down. Today we're gonna um, we're gonna do uh, this is June the tenth, right? Yes, I'll be glad to be on early tomorrow, Tanya. 
that'd be fine. Um, while she's um, asking about that, let me just go ahead and give a commercial. <laughs> Tanya and I are having our first Blizzard book hangout, hangout tomorrow. We've been doing one different kind of little book every month. And this time, this month, it's going to be a Blizzard book. And it's going to be noon Central Standard Time tomorrow on the 11th on my channel. And then on the 25th at the same time, noon Central Time on Tanya's channel. And Barbara Clark is going to be our guest this time. So um, if y'all can come, come play. But yes, I'll be there early for sure. Okay. Yeah, no, that's great. That's great, Tanya. Okay. Anybody else decide they want to play? Go get coffee. That's fine. Um, the prompt game we're going to play tonight is Password. I told you I was going to find some words. And then y'all could give me prompts from them. But, um, oh, let me show you the Blizzard book first. See, I'm just making you hang on. <laughs> this is a sample of a Blizzard book. And it's a folded, it's a folded book. There's no glue, no staples, no sewing. It's just folds. And this is an eight spine um, or an eight piece spine. So you can put eight pieces of paper in it. And one of the cool things is you can take them out and work on them and then put them back in. And then um, once you get, you know, get it the way you want it, you could even glue them in if you want to. Um, and then this is another one. It's just a bigger one, but it's the same kind of same kind of thing. And both of these are made with an 18-inch um, long piece of paper. And they've got eight spines or eight pieces to the spine. This one's made with a 12, a 12 by 12 piece of paper. I cut off some of it. So it's a 12-inch long piece of paper. And it only has four spines. Um, I made this one differently. I put some... Um, I glued in a cover for this one and made it a pocket. And same thing on the back. And then for this one, I'm putting in signatures. Now, I haven't put stuff in the signatures yet, but I'm going to. So it's just going to be a way to hold signatures. And even though it's only got four, four, a four-piece spine, you can put six signatures in here because of the way you put them in. <coughs> oh goodness, sorry. <coughs> no, Jerry, there's no prep work, but um playing with the folds might be something you want to do when you're not in a time crunch just for kicks. Um, you'll see me make this one in the video. <coughs> oh, goodness. I'm sorry. Let me get a cough drop. But I just watched a video and did it. But I did. I wasn't trying to work along with people when I did it the first time. So, in fact, when I made these, I didn't even have the video. I was just going from my memory of what the video did. And I managed to get them to work out. So um, it's not really difficult. <coughs> it does not have to be 18 inches long. That's just what I had when I made these. This one was 12 inches. So it depends on how big you want the book and how big you want your spines. Um, if I made this one out of a 12 inch long piece. Uh, let me see. This is this is one and a half inches wide, but if I made it into an eight an eight piece one like these, it would be three. It would be half as wide as this, so it'd be three quarters of an inch wide. 
and that's plenty wide. A lot of them are made that way. So you could use a 12 inch piece of scrapbook paper or whatever, which is what this is. It's scrapbook paper. And you could still do an eight, an eight um, piece binding. I just used the 18 because I had it and I hadn't planned on doing anything else specifically with it. So, and you make it however wide you want. Yeah, you do need to uh, remember that um, the length, you need the length of your book plus the width twice because you're going to fold this down. So you'll need the width, the length of your book plus the width on this end and the width on this end. And these are one inch, I think. So this one, um, this one is six inches to make a four inch book. Does that make sense? And you don't have to make it specific. You can just make the binding and then cut your pages to fit, which is what I did with this. I just made the binding and then I figured out what size pages I need and I made my pages. So it's really not that difficult. It's just unusual. Okay. I wanted to get a Pictionary game to do our prompted um, art play um, for tonight. Um, to get the words from, because I didn't want to have to try to pull them out of my head. But I couldn't find a Pictionary game at any of the thrift stores, <laughs> and I didn't have one. But I did have this Password game. It's a 1962 production of the Password game, um, and I had this one in my stash. So I just pulled it out, and this is what we're going to use to get our prompts tonight. So hopefully that'll be fun. I have um, I haven't looked at these except the first word in each one. And um, oh, good night, Jerry. Thanks for popping in. See you tomorrow. Um, I'm going to use one of them for the alternates, and we're going to come up with prompts from these words, and then I'm going to use the other one for our ten regular prompts. Um, I am going to change this one out because I saw the, no, I'm not. We're just going to go ahead and go for it because the first word, <laughs> um, the first word, so these are the alternates. Let me put that down. Yeah, it does for me too. Okay, alternates. And alternate number one. I'm going to write the word over here and then our prompts over here. Okay. The word for the first alternate is eel. E-E-L. Eel. So, um, so give me some art prompts that we can use. I'll give you an example. String. That's great. I was going to say curvy lines. Okay. Becky says squiggly lines. That works. And um, Mina says slinky. How would we turn slinky into, um, into a word we could use on our, maybe coil? Would that work, Mina? We could draw a coil and that would be the slinky. Slinky coil. Yay. Okay. Um, great minds and all that. Okay, number two is glass. Glass. So what can we use? Um, glitter. Okay. Beads. Transparent. Ooh, I like that, Allie. Y'all are going to have to be fast. These girls are working, working it tonight. Okay. Number three. Oh, I like that one too, Patricia. But I've already got three and I didn't leave enough room for more. But if you can remember it in your head, if you decide to use that one, you can use gems too. Okay. Number three is travel. T-R-A-V-E-L. Travel. Travel. 
Maps. That was my first thought too. What else? Yeah, we got a lot of maps. Everybody's thinking alike. So if you, maybe uh, something from where you were going to travel to. Stamps. Good job. Okay, maps and stamps. Tracks. Ooh, I like that. Tracks. Okay. Number four. <laughs> Okay, see what you can do with this one, folks. Gong, G-O-N-G, -G, gong. <clears throat> oh, wow, yellow lines, junk mail, image of a car or plane. Those all would have worked great, too. Music. Hey, y'all are good. Brass, ooh. Paper bag. All right, there's our three. Okay, so we've got four alternates. I'm, I, I remember there was a gong show, but my brain cannot remember anything about it. But I'm happy with paper bag. It works for me. Okay. So I'm going to put this one back up. And now we're going to get this one out that's our real prompts. So this was our warm-up, I guess. <laughs> okay. I think it's fun, Mary. I was getting tired of just picking sticks. <laughs> so, okay. Number one is melt. Melt. Oh, thank you, Beth. I'm glad you're enjoying that. So what can we get with melt? Emboss. Good. Spray and drip. Chocolate. Ooh, yum. So we've got chocolate. I don't know how to transfer that unless we do brown. And Holly says crayons. Are we going to melt crayons on our page? <laughs> the other thing I thought of was glue gun, but it's the same thing. Then we have to get that out and do that. So. And bra spray and drip. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and put chocolate down. And since we have a little more space, I'm going to put crayons. Because um, we can do we can do four since we got a long page here. You don't have to do it, but you can. But you don't have to. Okay. So we're going to use chocolate. We use it as a color. I think that works. And we're going to, but we're going to leave the brown separate from the crayons because you might want to use brown and not use crayons or use crayons and not use brown. Okay. I'm going to put that aside and we're going to do the first one. And I'm going to be working. Um, I'm going to be working on this page right here. All those buttons on the back page are kind of making my, make it bumpy. That's okay. It'll be fine. Okay. I think, oh, I've got a bunch of embossing powders that I got at a garage sale that I've never used. And um, I'm going to do this in the very lazy, lazy way. If I can find my 
gobber. <laughs> I have a embossing gobber, so we're going to just play with it. Okay, I'm going to do that. And then I'm going to choose got black or platinum or bronze. That one says blue, but it's obviously not blue. Hmm. I think I'm going to choose this color because it'll kind of go with what's over there. I haven't ever used this stuff before, so I'm not sure. Okay. Woo, made a mess. I was trying to be careful. We may do another color after I do this one, but let's go ahead and put that back under there. Probably got most of that off. Okay. Okay. Um, Yeah, emboss, spray and drip, chocolate or crayons. Our prompt was melt. And I'm embossing. So, um, sorry, Mark, no potatoes. Let's see, what other color do I want to use? Here's some red. We've got red over there. We might as well use red. Doesn't really look that red to me, but we're going to do it anyway. Okay. <clears throat> now it looks more red when you pour it on here. Is there another one? No, nope, I think I need another one though. Okay. I don't know why you can't see Mark. I see him playing his day. That's weird. Is 
Okay. Ooh, the red works a little better because I wasn't as too overly generous with it. Okay. Now I'm a heating embossing tool. Okay. <coughs> well, that's really weird, Susan. Okay. Now I gotta see if I can. All righty. Okay, Mary's ready. Okay, Mina. Are you back to play just now? Our um our prompt was melt and we used emboss, spray and drip, chocolate or crayons. So, um any of those will work. Holly's ready and Becky is ready. And Mina is ready. Oh, it's funny because that looks like crayon, doesn't it? <laughs> oh, but it's not. It's embossing powder. <laughs> okay, but Ruth is ready. Okay, our second prompt is. Wharf. W H A R F. Wharf. So give me some prompts that the wharf makes you think of. Water blue. Okay. Fish. Waves, shop, hmm, I would like to shop if I was at the wharf too, fried potatoes, Mark says, rope, says Mary, ship, oh, ship, says me, okay, let's do ship, okay, water blue, fish, waves, and ship. You can use rope if you want to, Mary. But I think four writing down is enough, and I'm trying to take the first four. Okay, water blue, fish, waves, ship. Mm. What am I going to do? I think I'm going to use blue. But what kind of blue am I going to use?
One of our um, alternates is string. So you could use rope instead of string. <laughs> okay, I'm going to do blue. Trying to decide what kind of blue I want to use. I think watercolor would work well. So let me get some watercolor out. Oh my goodness. Actually, I've changed my mind. I'm going to use, I've got blue in these um, powders. And since I've decided to keep them, I need to use them. So I've got to decide which blue to use. I think I've got two blues. Okay. Stargaze and Teal Zircon. That's funny because the teal looks bluer than the stargaze. So we'll use the teal. <laughs> Splinters and sunburn. <laughs> We're trying to think positive, Azure. <laughs> I'm glad you're here. Okay, that may be way more than I needed. I always end up um, doing too much. So, well, the teal looks very teal on here, doesn't it? So we're going to get some blue and some waves and all kinds of stuff with this one. Okay. That's not really blue. I'm going to add some blue. So that was a mistake, obviously. Ah, way too much. Okay. And this blue looks purple. I'm just not going to get blue. Okay. We're going to just call that good. And um, <laughs> I'm going to mop up a little bit of this out here. So get it. Okay, let me dry this a little bit. Okay, Becky's fast. Becky's already ready. Put these back over here. And mark Becky ready, and then I'm going to dry. 
Mina's ready. Lisa's not ready. <laughs> oh, hi, Patricia. Okay, we're going to just let that be good enough. Um, how goes the purge? Well, I purged watercolor stuff. And that's about as far as I've gotten so far. Um, well, I did. What was the other thing I did? No, well, I think that's actually, actually all. Um, I do have a list. Where did I put that? A list of things um, that I'm planning to do in the future. I intended to do some today, but I woke up with a headache and I didn't do anything today. But I'm planning to do stickers and stamps and lace and fabric, envelopes and folders, paint, miscellaneous papers, book pages, scrapbook paper, miscellaneous bling, ephemera, books, yarn, and some spinning fiber. Those are some things I'm planning to go through in this process. But... Um, so far, the, the watercolor stuff is all I've actually finished. So it's um, it's progress. It's not as fast a progress as I wanted. I was telling somebody, if, um, if I hadn't promised to videotape it, I could just come out here and work a little bit without worrying about... Um, worrying about bringing the, ca the um, computer out here so I can videotape it and all of that. And I could probably get it done faster. But I think being um, accountable to make a video will make me do it better. <laughs> so I did very quickly find homes for everything. So um, very quickly. Oh, that needs a little bit more drying. Okay, um, I just noticed that Mary's ready, and Holly is ready, and Ruth is drying. And I really need to dry just a little bit more. I'm sorry. And I have to do it in baby steps, Mark, because if I try to do it all at once, I've done that before. And what happened was I got in the get rid of it zone and I got rid of things that I wish later I hadn't just because I was in the zone. And so doing it a little bit at a time makes me think about each part of it instead of just um, getting rid of things to get rid of things. <laughs> so, okay. Ruth says, don't wait. So the next prompt is 
devil. I don't like having the devil in my um, in my work at all. So we're going to skip that one. No devil. Oh, well, this one's going to be hard, though. <laughs> oh, everybody says red. See, I knew that's what you'd say. <laughs> do y'all want to go ahead and do that one? Because the next one's going to be harder. Deviled eggs. There you go. All right. We'll go ahead and do it. Red and eggs. Flames. The word was devil. Flames. And um, ovals. Okay, that's four. Yeah, I know he's not going to win, so I shouldn't worry about it. You're right. The next one's going to be a lot harder, so we'll just go ahead and do this one real quick. And I'm going to do something red, I think, um, because I've got some red on here already. And so it will, um, that sounds like a plan to me. I'm going to use red Posca pen. Okay, and I'm going to draw some egg-shaped petals. These, none of these look alike. <laughs> oh, that one's really bad. Okay. Baked potatoes. <laughs> well, those could be ovals, couldn't they? <laughs> No. Okay, I'm going to dry this a little bit. Deviled eggs came from ancient Rome and called that because they were boiled and seasoned with hot spices. I have no idea, Holly. Maybe it has to do with eggs. Um, I think I always thought that it was deviled because they were mashed up, but seasoned makes sense too. Okay, Mina is ready. I did not intend for this to turn into a flower child page, but that's what it looks like right now. Something from the 70s. Yeah, whipping and deviled, like deviled ham. It's all mashed up. And I like deviled eggs, by the way. Ruth is ready. 
Mary is ready. Ruth, Mina. Okay, somebody else was ready. Mina, Ruth, Mary. Okay, I guess not. They're sprinkled, sprinkled with paprika. Yes, they are. At least the ones I eat are. Becky's ready. Now you've got me wanting some deviled eggs. Pickles, onion, all kinds of stuff you put in. At least I put all kinds of stuff in mine. And usually there's a big bunch of that stuff left over because it won't all fit on the eggs, even if you pile it up. So then I just eat the stuff. <laughs> oh, gonna have to make some of those tomorrow. Oh, there you go. Perks of being the cook. That's right. There need to be perks when you do the cooking. You need some perks. Becky cooks yolks, mayo, little mustard, salt, and pepper. That's it. She goes for simple simplicity. I have eaten them a hundred different ways. When you go to, to church potlucks, they're always devil days and they're never made the same way. So <laughs> never made the same way. I don't even make mine the same way every time. So, okay. Holly, did you say you were ready? Cause if you did, I missed it. Let me go back and look. Okay. No, I didn't miss her. That makes me feel better because sometimes I feel bad when I miss people. Okay. Holly is ready. Okay. <laughs> uh, number four is pension. <laughs> like you get when you retire. Pension. P-E-N-S-I-O-N. -S so what can we use? for pension. <laughs> Y'all got to come up with something. <laughs> something old. Okay. Something old. And it can, we'll let that be anything. Green. Very good. See, y'all are good. Silver. One more. Gold. Okay. That ought to make everybody happy. Something old, green, silver, or gold. I skipped. What did I skip? Oh, I missed coins. I did. And money. I missed both of those. I guess I saw green and thought money, and so I didn't even think about it. Okay. Um, well, we've got silver and gold, and we can make those um coins we'll just say coins because green and coins both can be money so we'll add coins in there sorry about that you can we can use green and silver and gold all as money <laughs> they were all prompted from money i know that all right what am i going to do um I'll get that back out of the way. Good grief. I ought to just take a pile at a time instead of a carrot a um a, what do you, what would you call these? A grouping of stuff at a time and just start with the pile right behind me that I'm trying to trip over. Oh, 
Okay. Let me find something old here. I've got book pages all over the place when I don't need them. Now, where are they when I want them? That really is amazing how that happens. Okay, let's see. All right, here we go. I did say the first four, Mary, and I put coins in there. I did it back in um, because it was one of the first four. So we can take gold off if you want and just use coins, but I can't imagine Mary not wanting gold. We're going to fight over a prompt here. No gold, no coins, no gold. No, y'all wouldn't fight over prompts. Take green off. <laughs> but green was number two. <laughs> oh, we just can't be happy, can we? <laughs> I'm going to put a bunch of these butterflies on here. <laughs> Just telling you right now. And then I got all the confetti. Oh, I'll save that. I might use that in something. Okay. Save that one too. Mm. Let's take these. Got to get rid of all this confetti stuff here. Okay. Your pension is more likely to be copper than any other. Isn't that true, Susan? Oh, my goodness. We're going to try to think positive. <laughs> oh. So, so true. You missed something. Yeah, you did. We're having a pretend fight over, <laughs> over prompts. <laughs> but it was just for fun. It wasn't real. No real fusses involved. Okay. <sighs> We're going to use them all. Something old. Green, silver, gold, coins. Five. <laughs> Everybody gets to be happy tonight. Everybody gets to be happy tonight. I don't do it on purpose, Mary. I promise. I promise. <laughs> I promise.
So, so she rebels. I tell you. What are we going to do? My children are not very rebellious. They never have been. So I guess I have to have my rebellion online. <laughs> and she's still the first one done, even though she's rebelling. I don't know why it matters, but I like to have my butterflies all go in different directions. It's part of trying to be organizedly random, I think. Are all those down? Okay. Mary, add some exclamation marks, at, marks after rebel for the dramatic effect. <laughs> uh, wow, you're lucky, Lisa, or you did something. I'm lucky. I got great kids. Um, and I've, I've tried to, I've tried, but I know a lot of people who try and their kids still rebel. So I don't think it's on me. Thank you, Holly. You're sweet. <laughs> Mary's page looks like Davy Jones' locker. Well, interesting. I can't wait to see a picture. Okay. <laughs> Allie's still waiting to rebel. Well, I was not a rebellious child. I'm, I'm going to have to admit, they say you pay for your raisins. So maybe that's how I managed to get this. But the most rebellious, <laughs> I've probably told y'all this before, but the most rebellious thing that I did <laughs> was when I moved out. And got my own place. I bought bounty paper towels and Charmin toilet paper. Because <laughs> my mom always bought the cheap stuff. <laughs> that was my rebellion. <laughs> that was my rebellion. <laughs> okay. Now let me go back and see who all is ready. I know Mary's ready. Let's see. Okay, Mary's ready, and Mina is ready. The British ignored the props. <laughs> well, <laughs> sometimes... It is smart, Holly. Sometimes it is. <laughs> the Mary Atia Rebel Club. <laughs> okay. Don't forget in all this fun to let me know when you're ready. I got you, Mary. 
I did notice you were ready. <clears throat> Becky's ready. <coughs> Excuse me. I'm sorry, y'all. When you have a headache, it's not the best time to be coughing a lot. And I seem to be coughing a lot today, too. They're probably feeding each other. I don't know how a headache feeds a cough, but um, the cough definitely feeds the headache. <clears throat> okay, Holly's ready. <clears throat> no, they don't mix, Holly. <laughs> It's a bad combination. Deco Art Extreme Sheen 24 Karat Gold is awesome. Can you link a link to it on Amazon or something, Becky? Okay. Ruth is ready, so we're all ready. <coughs> oh, goodness, except me. Oh. <coughs> <coughs> How many cough drops does it take to get through a live stream? Two so far. <laughs> mm. Okay, number five is fist. Hmm. Fist. Thanks, Becky. Okay, just a second. Huh. Okay, Mary Rebel. I get that, but I don't know what it means. Tell me what you mean when you say that so that I can um, put a prompt down. And I'll leave a space for it. And then punch and gold. How? Making a Batman page. Holly. I got punch. Gotcha, Holly. <coughs> okay, I'm waiting for Mary to tell me what anger or fight. Okay, I got that. And what what does that mean? I mean, how, how do I how do I fix that into a prompt? <coughs> well, don't kid me, Susan. It was one of the first four, so I wrote it down. <laughs> <coughs> yes, it could be a gold medal. You're right. Or golden gloves. Black eye. <laughs> <coughs> Slap and drag paint. Woo! I like that. Okay. We're going to put that down for your, for your rebel, Mary. Slap and drag. Or anger could be red. That's true, too. <laughs> Scrunched paper, she says. Okay. Scrunched paper. These are all good. I'm just I'm just gonna keep writing them down till we get one, two, three, four, five. All right, we're gonna be okay with five tonight because all of those are good. I like the slap and dragon one. And you could punch something out. And you could use gold because if you're a really good, if you've got a really good fist, you win. And scrunched paper. Okay. Do what you want there. I'm gonna slap and drag them. Slap and drag them.
yeah, I like slap and drag too. That's um, that's a a deedism. Slap and drag them. Okay, I need some paint. Let me find the, um. Okay, here's some Delusion Spray Ink Cherry Pie. That's what I'm going to use for my slap and drag them. Let's see what happens. <laughs> Woo! All right, folks. There we go. Good night, Tanya. <laughs> I hope everything works out easy for tomorrow. Okay. Boy, that totally obliterated some stuff, didn't it? But it's interesting. A crime scene, yeah. <laughs> I won the fight. It's not my blood, Mary. <laughs> I wish I had some caution tape. I might be able to put it on there. Oh, this is one thing about prompts. You definitely end up with a page you never would have come up with otherwise. <laughs> or at least I do. It's never something I would come up with on my own. Needs just so. Uh, mine too, Mary. Mine too. Look at that. The evidence is all over me. Oh, goodness. That's not coming off. Okay. So long, flowers. Yep. No, Mary, it's not yours. Whoever it is must have just run into my hard head and got their nose bloody because... That's the only way I would I would win. <laughs> okay. About a pot, she says. Well, maybe I dropped um, a bag from the blood drive. <laughs> hmm. Okay, this is definitely a weird page, but we're going to just keep going because that's only prompt number five, so.
I don't know if y'all can see it, but the, well, you can't really, but the, um, the red Posca pen looks like it's lightly white underneath there. I don't know if y'all, I don't guess y'all can see. Yeah, there you go. You see that? It looks like it's white under there just because it's a lighter red, I guess. Mary's looks like a shipwreck. Okay, Becky's ready. Mary's ready. The alternates are a string, squiggly lines, coil, glitter, beads, transparent, maps, stamps, tracks, music, brass, paper bag. Those are the alts. Mina's ready. I haven't used any alternates yet. But there's still five more to go, so I will be surprised if I get through it without using any. <clears throat> oh, it's okay, Holly. I'm off tonight, too. <laughs> Susan, uh, when, um, whenever my dad or mom have been in the hospital, one of us was always there with them all the time, not even just when they needed blood. Um, yeah, it's just better to have someone around paying attention because they work so hard and they have so many patients to see, um, mistakes are bound to happen. Ruth is ready. <laughs> oh dear. I don't know how I'm going to redeem this page. I've only actually given blood, you know, at a blood drive um, once. The other times I've given blood, I actually went down to the blood bank and to their office and gave blood there. Um, so far, I've been blessed to not have a bad experience. Okay, Holly, are you ready? Okay. Okay, I don't know why I keep putting that pin up because I just have to open it up again. Okay, number six is and i think we ought to just use this one exactly like it is okay you ready this is just a one prompt prompt i don't know if we can do it but we're going to try numbers 
numbers. If you don't like numbers, you can do an alternate. <laughs> I'm not sure if I want to use numbers or not, but um, but we're just going to let that one be easy. I do have a numbers stencil I think I'll use now that I think about it, if I can find it. Okay. I actually have a couple of them, so I may do some of each. Yes, you can do Roman numerals. You can do whatever kind of numbers you want. We're just going to do numbers. Not have to think too hard on this one. Um... Actually, I think I'm just going to use that one. That way I don't get more than one. I'm going to use black. Oh. No, nope. I'm not going to use black because I got that out. And I'm just going to use it. You could. You could use a playing card. You could do whatever you want. I don't care. As long as it has something to do with numbers. This is a <clears throat> any kind of number thing you want. Or you can use a an alternate. <laughs> yeah, you always please, Susan, you're a sweetie. I think I'm going to use this clock too. It's got numbers on it. So see, here we go. Holding that for last. That's fine, Mary. That's a good idea, actually. Ooh, that didn't come out very good. Well, I think it's that way on purpose. I mean, that's the way the stencil is. Looks like I messed up, but it's really just the stencil. It's not me. It's the stencil. <laughs> okay. Let me get my... Where is that book? Mm. I just saw it. There it is. 
Okay. Okay, I thought I had a wipe. And now I can't find it. Um. That's a good idea, Mary. Put numbers on your coins. Oh, please stay put. Uh, I've got a wallpaper book sitting over here beside me. It keeps trying to fall down and keep my chair from moving. <laughs> Using the transparent for what? Oh, I can't wait to see your page. That is going to be interesting. It'll probably definitely look better than mine. This is definitely turning out strange. I like it better with the numbers, though, than I did before. Okay. Oh, sorry. Becky's ready and Mina is ready. Ruth is ready. Let me go back up and see if I miss somebody else being ready. No. Okay, good. I used red on this page to begin with so that it would go with this, but it does not go with that at all. <laughs> Your page doesn't usually come together until seventh prompt. Mary is ready. Well, that's the next one, so we'll see what happens. <laughs> I hope that, that that'll work for me, too. All righty. The next word is fly. Fly. So give me some prompts for fly. <coughs> Wings. Stencil through a fly swatter. Woo, okay. Um, wall. Bug. <laughs> Splat. Oh, y'all are funny. You could make a splat. <laughs> All righty. Splat. There we go. Wings, stencil through a fly swatter, wall, bug, or splat. 
Oh, how funny. There are probably some stenciled out there with splats on them that we could use. I don't think I have a splat stencil, but that would be funny. Okay, so what am I going to do? I don't have a fly swatter. I do have something with bricks, though, and that might work for wall. Let me find um, where those bricks are. Okay, well, these aren't exactly bricks, but we're going to use them and pretend they're bricks because I don't know where my other stencil with bricks on it is. So we're going to use this one. And what color am I going to make my bricks? I think I'm going to use some gesso or white paint, one or the other. Um, I've got white paint right here, so that's what I'm going to use. Yes, you could make ladybugs. That would be cute. We're glad you're here. I'm glad you're not silent anymore. You let us know you were here. I appreciate that. I like knowing who's here. The best color for blood gut, bug guts. Well, I tell you, Becky, on my when I took my trip to San Antonio, I had some big yellow. I mean, talk about yellow spots, and they did not want to wash off. I had just have the guy scrub my car three times to get those big yellow bugs, bug guts off. Um, I mean, they were bright yellow like this. I don't know what kind of bugs they were. But they were, they were big, big splats. It was a big bug, whatever it was. Okay, now I've got white. I need to go in my book now with some white. Might as well do it on the same page, just for fun.
Okay. There's my wipe off page. <laughs> Looks kind of pretty, doesn't it? It looks like it needs an angel in the middle of it. Okay. Thanks, Holly. Okay. Now I've been missing to see who's ready. Okay. Nobody so far. So that's good. I didn't miss anything. Alrighty. Becky is ready. Mina is ready. Mary is drying and Holly is ready. I'm going to go ahead and mark you as ready, Mary, even though you're still drying. We'll wait for you to dry. Ruth is ready. And Mary says to go ahead. Okay. Ah, let's see what you can do with this one. Chivalry. Chivalry. C H I. V A L R Y Chivalry. <laughs> oh, Teresa, I love that. <laughs> A knight, Holly says, and Becky says it's dead. <laughs> A knight, or I'm, I'm going to put armor. Two with the knight, A R M O R, because you might that's what we think of with the knight is its armor silver, gold, horse, and feathers. All right, armor or a knight, silver, gold, horse, or feathers. Oh, now you're saying two, Holly. Feathers or shield? You got to choose. <laughs> shield actually makes more sense. We'll stick it in there, too, because I'm easy to not. Okay. Knight or armor, silver, gold, horse, feathers, or shield? You can do any of those, or you can um, you can do uh, alternate. We only have two more left after this. I hope somehow we can come up with a focal point out of those last two. Hmm. What do I want to do? Okay. I've got a gold marker here. Feathers are in his helmet. Okay, that makes sense. Some knight lost his armor at the bottom of the sea with all the gold. <laughs> there you go, Mary. <laughs> oh, well, I think I'm going to use this with gold. I don't know if it'll work with the marker. I'm going to try it. And we'll call it chain mail. It'll be part of his armor. It may not work at all. 
I don't know. I've never tried to do this before. Let's see. Oh, that's not bad, actually. Okay. Kind of liking that actually. My gold chain mail. This was a, a very wealthy knight that wore this armor. That's true, Arlene. Well, hi, Skylar. It's good to see you tonight. I haven't seen you in a long time. Welcome to, um, welcome to our play. We're making, um, we're doing an art prompt game with the old game password, using the words for our prompts. The word for this one was chivalry. I'm sure a scholar is a chivalrous young man and he would lay down his coat over a puddle for a lady or take his hat off. He's lost in the shipwreck. <laughs> Okay. The thing about this kind of thing is it's hard to know when to stop. When you've done too much. Never put chain mail on an art page before. <laughs> I almost wish I had done this on something else and was going to make it into ATCs because I think it'd make neat looking ATCs. But I didn't. So here I am. I'm glad you think so, Susan. Definitely getting some layers on here, so. Can't say we don't have layers tonight. Okay, I'm going to do a few more here, and then I'm going to stop. Okay. Okay, Mina's ready. <coughs> 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 
<laughs> Ruth is ready. Becky's ready. And my puppy is whining. I'll be going to let him in. Come on, honey. Oh, you need to go back there and lay down. That's right. Lay down. Oh. You did a seahorse. That's cool, Holly. I like that. Becky's wishing it was for ATCs. Me too. Of course, my page is so little, I wouldn't get very many ATCs out of it, but maybe six. <laughs> <coughs> All right, Mary's ready. So let's see what's next. Recipe. R-E-C-I-P-E. Recipe. This is when we could use Mark's potatoes. <laughs> oh. All right. Words. Very good. Food. Letters. Measurements. Very good. That was quick. Hi, Kendra. Just jumped in right here at the end. It's good to see you. You may have been in here before and I just missed it, but I'm glad you're here. And Susan says sprinkles. Okay. Words, food, letters, measurements, and sprinkles. That's five, and I'm out of space. So we're going to stop there, and I got to decide what I'm going to do. I may save this one until after I do number 10. So I will, I'm hoping I'll get that some kind of, um, you know, photo or something I can do. And if not, I'll make my words my um, focal point. So I'm just going to wait until after number 10. I'm not going to look. I started to look ahead, but I'm not going to. I'm going to be good. <clears throat> Trying to remember where I have words. I have words somewhere. <laughs> I've got words. I'll just get an old book page and steal words out of it. That'll be the challenge for this one after I do the next one. Do you like trying new recipes, Arlene? One of my favorite member, memories of my grandma was that she never could just use a recipe. She always started with a recipe, but she never just went by the recipe. Um, <clears throat> so one time she made, made something and she came in and she was like, Lisa, I went exactly by the recipe this time. And then her, the very next words out of her mouth were, well, except for... <laughs> It's like, Grandma, you just can't do it. <laughs> you just can't do it. You can't go right by the recipe. So her stuff was always new things. She liked to try, add this or a little bit of that. And, oh, I miss her.
One interesting idea is to allow for saving one prompt to the end, but only one. That's true. That's true. And I'm fine with that. Anybody who wants to do that, that's good. But only one, Susan says. You can't save two things. Yeah. Well, it's hard because the recipe might be perfect the way it is, you know? So it's probably a good idea to go right by the recipe. I remember um, one of the first things that I ever cooked that was um, a recipe from Darren's mom was a recipe for this goulash dish. But it was like there was no onions. There was no spicy anything in it. And... Um, and so I couldn't, I couldn't just do that, you know, so I made the recipe, but I added some onions and I added some other things in there. And then, um, and then I told Darren, this is your mom's recipe. And he looked, I mean, he didn't even have to taste it. He said, that's not my mom's recipe. <laughs> I said, well, it is except for, <laughs> oh, see, I'm just like my grandma. All right. Becky's ready. Follow the recipe to the letter once. Yeah, because there might be a reason they left that out. <laughs> Holly's ready. This is almost your mom's recipe. Yeah, that's what I should have said. <laughs> oh, I don't think his mom put onions in anything. I don't think she, she just didn't fix spicy foods and I grew up on spicy foods. And so, um, he had to learn to like spicy foods. He does now he loves it. But at first it was a little hard on both of us, but he's always been good. He has only ever refused to eat one thing that I cooked only one thing. And, um, So I think he's pretty, he's a pretty good guy. I'm happy to have him. <laughs> you would have loved eating Darren's mom's food because she didn't put onions in anything. Susan, you should have been her daughter. That would have worked out. What was the one thing? It was um, an okra gumbo. He was not eating okra gumbo. <laughs> All right. Mary's ready. And I don't know how real gumbo it was. It was what my mom called okra gumbo. And so that's, um, <clears throat> of course, I didn't even make it exactly like she did. I put um, Rotel tomatoes in it instead of regular tomatoes. So, <laughs> um. oh, goodness, Holly, how sad. I don't know what I'd do if I had to give up onions. Even eating keto, I, I let my carbs be onions sometimes. <laughs> okay, Becky and Holly are ready. Mary's ready. Did I miss anybody? Oh. Mm. Mina's ready. And Ruth is ready. Okay. We're going to have to do this last prompt pretty quickly because my head just suddenly got way worse. Okay. Number five, number five, number 10 is Jester. J E S T E R. J-E-S-T-E-R, jester, like court jester. So give me some prompts. Bells. Face. Colorful. 
That was the one that I thought of too, Holly. Bells, add a face and colorful. Thank you, Becky, for the add a face. That helps me out. <laughs> uh, the kind of bells they have on their cap. Yeah, they're colorful caps. So <laughs> bright. Bright and colorful do not have to be the same thing. Diamonds. You you have a wealthy jester, Holly. Oh, I ran out of room for Harlequin. One, two, three, four, five. We're going to stop there. If you want to add a Harlequin, you can. I just ran out of room. Okay. And I'm going to do um, a face. I'm going to do a face. Let me put this up. Now I gotta find the face. Having trouble finding a face. And the ones I've found so far are really kind of small for this. Okay. All right. Well, there's a face. She'd cover up the whole page. That might be a good idea. Well, I could use that face. Let's see if I've got something that's already out. There's a face. <laughs> Ooh, there's a face. All right. Let's see. We can put that one in there. Pretty much covers up the whole page. We could put that little guy in there, but then he doesn't. Somehow he's just hanging out there in the air. I don't like that. You need a goofy face. I don't have a goofy face. I got that face. Let's see if there's a goofy face in here. I got all these moody faces. She looks kind of well, the red's not the right kind of red. Let's see. Ooh, I like that. We'll use that for a word. There we go. How about that one? You like that one? <laughs> it was goofy. I 
I could put two of those faces on and that could be joy. Oh, she's cute. She could be joy. Yeah, that one was pretty goofy. I may end up doing that if I want a goofy face. I may not be able to find any more goofy faces. That one's kind of goofy. Okay, we'll hold on to that one too. Okay, we've got this one, and we've got this one, and then we've got the word joy. So what do we want? This number one or number two? Number one, Mina says. All righty. Mina was first, so I'm going to go with her. This one will be pretty easy to cut out, too. Thank you, Mina. <laughs> I don't have my fussy cutting scissors out here, so I do most of that in the house while I'm watching TV. The only problem with this picture is the same problem I had with the dog picture, and that is that um, it'll, if I put it in the middle, it's kind of hanging out in space. Which I don't really like. Number one makes Mina joyful. <laughs> she doesn't show up very much, though, does she? Hmm. got to think about this because um, I don't really like the fact that she's just um, she's just hanging out there. Kind of like to have her grounded. And the other lady's got a body that can ground her to the bottom. But we could do it like that. <coughs> if I layer her on a bigger face. Oh my goodness. Um, Y'all are getting complicated now. I don't think I have a... 
something that would look good that's bigger. <coughs> because of her hands being on there, I don't know if that'll work. <coughs> Um. <coughs> she needs a jester hat. That would be cute. Don't have any jester hats. I don't know that I have any hats that would fit her. No. No, I don't like it. All right, let's see what we can do to make a hat. There's part of a hat, but that won't really work. Oh, I just thought of something. Oh. Okay. Maybe we could make that into a hat. We can put this on there as our face. <laughs> Doesn't really go with joy, but it looks good on the page. I won't fit. Okay, here what we got. How about that? It says, find the beauty in you. Let's see. Ooh. Now we could make her a hat out of that. Okay, so do we want the hat out of this? And then which one of these do we want? So find the beauty in you. Is that what we're going to use instead of joy? All right, now to make her a hat out of this. Hmm. 
Well, there's our adjuster hat. Doesn't quite fit her though. So let's go ahead and Of course, it won't all fit on the page. It's too big. Too late, Holly. Sorry. <laughs> I should have paid attention to you before I started cutting on it. All right. We're going to have to make them shorter. Um. That's still not going to fit. Okay, we could do we could do it to the side a little bit and get that many on there. And then I think we just let those break off right there. There we go. Okay. You can just put that on her hat even. Okay, so what do you think? Does that look good? Are we happy? Are we joyful? <laughs> All right. Let's start with her. Glue her down. Um, there's... Uh, wait a second. I need to. Okay. <laughs> okay. I'm glad you're joyful. I like. People to be joyful. Uh oh. Okay, let's see if we can. I need to put something right here because that didn't work out quite like I wanted it to. I need to fix that somehow. So I need some jewels or something to go right there. Oh, we can use this. Let's see. It makes me joyful. <laughs> it 
it just makes me joyful to come in here on Monday nights and play with y'all. That I enjoy that. Now let's see if this will fix it. Does that help? Does that make it any better? Bye bye, Holly. Thank you for playing. Okay. That's all I needed. One person to tell me it's perfect, and then I'm off with it. I'm going to go. <laughs> oh, Mina. Oh, I thought when you said you were off, it meant you had to leave. Okay, well, that's interesting. That's a very, <laughs> very interesting page. I would have never done that without y'all. <laughs> Oh, good night, Ruth. Yeah, I definitely need to go to sleep. God bless you, hon. Mm. Well, that's actually better than I thought it was going to be. <laughs> oh. Mm. Well, I need to go to, um, oh, I'll do it again. I'll keep the game out here and we'll do it again. I, I think this has been the funnest one I've ever done for me, even if my page is weird. Uh, I like these kind of prompts. I think they're working out great. So we'll probably, we'll do it. Um, we'll do it probably next week. We'll do another one out of this one. And then, um, then maybe we'll use another, another kind, more traditional. If you want to, we can do that the week after but um but i think this was a lot of fun something a little different um true mixed media there you go it's got a little bit of everything so whoo uh hopefully i'll see you tomorrow at noon central time when we do our hangout and make a blizzard book thank you holly good night everybody and God bless you all. Bye-bye.